Hello everyone, in this video I want to show you an affordable book on real analysis that is written by very famous mathematicians. It is called Introductory Real Analysis. It is by A. N. Kolmogorov and S. V. Foman, and it is translated and edited by Richard A. Silverman. Now, one of the really cool things about this book, besides the fact that it's a math book and it's written by uh, Kolmogorov and Foman, is that it has been reprinted by Dover. So Dover is a publishing company, and I have no association with them or anything. I wish I did because I can get free books maybe, but they, they've never sent me a book. Um, they are, are awesome because they sell books and they're affordable. So I'll leave a link in the description um, to this book in case you want to pick it up. I'm just going to give it a whip here. Ah, smells so good. Smells so, so good. So let's open it up and take a look. Here you can see some of the other uh, Dover books on mathematics. Again, they reprint books that you've probably never heard of, uh, which is really cool. And it's translated here by Silverman, as you can see. I have other books translated by Silverman. Copyright 1970, Richard A. Silverman. This Dover edition, first published in 1975, is an unabridged, slightly corrected republication of the work originally published by Prentice Hall, Inc., Englewood Cliffs, New Jersey, in 1970. Let's look, let's look here at the editor's preface, see what this says. The present course is a freely revised and restyled version of pages 1 to 380 of the second edition of the Russian original Moscow 68. The result is a comprehensive but manageably proportioned and entirely elementary introduction to real and functional analysis from a consistently modern point of view. Yes, yes. So this was originally written uh, in Russian. And here are the contents. Let's take a look at this. So it starts with set theory, which, which makes sense. Um, a lot of these books start with set theory, equivalence of sets, the power of a set, ordered sets and ordinal numbers, then goes into metric spaces. Again, very good progression. Um, topological spaces, linear spaces, linear functionals. So to, to read this book, by the way, like if you wanted to buy this and learn from this book, you do need to know how to write mathematical proofs. That is definitely the strongest requirement in my opinion. Because if you know how to write proofs, you're gonna know some more math. You're gonna know calculus. You're gonna know set theory. Um, so having some proof writing skills will help you. And the more math you have, uh, the easier this book will be. Now, one thing I don't think this book has, let me just look in the back. I don't, I don't think it has, it's got an index. Yeah, it doesn't, it doesn't have answers. And if we go to the exercises, let's go to some of the exercises so we can look at those. And here's some of the problems. All right, here's some problems. They give you hints, though they do give you hints for some of the problems and comments. So that is, that is quite good. So here's where it starts. Set theory, sets and functions basic definitions, and this is something that you probably already know. If you don't, it's, it's, it's worth learning. Mathematics habitually deals with sets made up of elements of various kinds, e.g. the set of faces of a polyhedron, the set of points on a line, the set of all positive integers, and so on. Because of their generality, it is hard to define these concepts in a way that does more than merely replace the word set by some equivalent term like class, family, collection, etc., and the word element by some equivalent term like member. We will adopt a naive point of view and regard the notions of a set and the elements of a set as primitive and well understood. And yeah, and that's a good point of view. Um, sometimes it's good to take that naive point of view uh, so you can focus on the bigger picture, so you can focus on the real analysis. So it's basically like a crash course on set theory and a lot of advanced math books do this. In fact, I, used to, I always used to joke, like when you get a math degree, the one thing you're definitely going to know is set theory because you see it in, in almost every course. Many undergraduate and graduate level books always start with a review of set theory because modern mathematics is, is based on that, right? So it talks about different operations. These are called Venn diagrams. It talks about functions and mappings, images and pre-images, all very important things uh, when you're learning uh, mathematics. 
equivalence relations, all really important stuff. And it's got all, it's got examples and it has exercises, but again, the big the big con is that I mean these are great exercises, right? But you don't have solutions, and and that's that's tough. Now, does that make it a bad book? No, definitely not, especially because it's so affordable. Uh, as you can see, I bought my copy brand new. I think might have, no, I think I got I got it new. I think I got this new. A, a lot of times I'll get them used, but when it comes to Dover books, like the price difference. It's honestly not that big sometimes. Like the, the new copies are very similar to the old ones. And sometimes when you get old copies, they're all beat up and I, I don't know. I just wanted my new copies, so I decided to splurge. Ah, here talks about topological spaces. Let's take a look at this. Definition one. Given a set X by a topology in X is meant a system tau of subsets G of X called open sets relative to tau. Yeah, they're open in tau. Members of tau are called open sets with the following two properties. The set X itself and the empty set belong to tau. In other words, uh, the set X, X itself and the empty set are open sets because open sets are the members of tau. Arbitrary finite or infinite unions uh, of uh, members of tau are in tau and finite intersections of members of tau are in tau. Um, yeah, you can actually read this can be done a couple ways, actually. I've seen a book that does it for, uh, instead of saying finite, it does it for two, and then you can generalize that via induction for any finite number for the intersections. You can also define topologies in terms of neighborhood systems, and then show that that definition is equivalent to this definition. Definition two, by a topological space is meant a pair x comma tau consisting of a set x and a topology tau defined in x. Cool, yeah. And, and, and look, they give you examples. There's examples and stuff. So it's not like the book is without examples. This is an interesting one. Let's look at example four. Uh, it's a little bit more concrete perhaps for you than some of the other ones. Let, ta let, let T be the set containing the two elements A and B, consisting just of two points A, B, and let the open sets in T be T itself. Um, the empty set and the single element set B. So the open sets are going to be T, the empty set, and just this set here. Then it says, then the two properties in definition one are satisfied and T is a topological space. The closed sets in the space are T itself, the empty set, and the set A. Note that the closure of B is the whole space T. So it's pretty quick. So it's using a lot of terminology that was introduced just up here. So it's very, very um, concise and to the point. I wanted to use the word advanced. I guess advanced is a good word, but I think it's to the point. And you'll notice that in books by uh, Kolmogorov. And that's one of the reasons I like books like this. A lot of times these older books are just, they're just straight to the point and there's no fluff. You know, you'll sit down and it'll take you uh, some time, you know, to get through one page or two pages. So yeah. I do have videos, by the way. They're free. They're available for free on YouTube. I have a whole playlist on topology. Um, I have videos on a lot of the things from this book uh, here on my channel that are just free. You can just search. You can just search YouTube, right? Math Source for Topology or search my channel. There's a little search thing there. And I've got some, I've got like intro to topology. I've got some metrics based stuff too. This is really fun. Yeah, let's look at this definition here. It's the definition of a metric space. By a metric space is meant a pair x comma rho consisting of a set x and a distance rho it est a single valued non-negative real function rho of x y defined for all x y and capital X which has the following three properties. So rho of x y is equal to zero if and only if x is equal to y. Symmetry, so rho of x y is equal to rho of y x for all x y. And last but not least the infamous triangle inequality. Rho of xz is less than rho of xy plus rho of yz. You will often refer to the set x as a space and its elements x, y, etc. as points. Metric spaces are usually denoted by a single letter, like r equals and then r is the you know x comma rho. Now, if 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 the metric is is needed, you know sometimes you'll you'll emphasize it, or even by the same letter x as used for the underlying space in cases where there is no possibility of confusion. Right, clarity. Uh, is paramount. Math is already hard enough. The last thing you need is to be unclear. <laughs> so, you know, uh, yeah, yeah. Pretty good stuff. And it's got examples, which is really, really cool. 
Yeah, this is, this is a wonder. Look at all these examples. What a wonderful book. I'm getting goosebumps. I really like this book. Yeah. Ah, look at all these exercises. Again, unfortunately, there's no, no solutions, but that's okay. You've got plenty of examples. You can struggle through them. And honestly, a lot of times on the proofs, like if you can figure out the proof, you know if you're doing it right. I mean, that's, you know, most of the time. I mean, most of the time. I remember as an undergrad getting back some assignments in complex analysis and thinking, oh, I knew I did this right, and then I did it wrong. But the more you learn, the more you realize, yeah, I'm pretty sure I did that proof right. You start to feel more confident uh, in your solutions. But... Wonderful book. Uh, I'll leave a link in the description. Um, also, if you want to learn math, I have courses. Check them out. They're on my website, mathsorcerer.com um, or freemathvids.com. They're actually on the Udemy platform, but I've lowered the prices to like the bare minimum that Udemy would let me lower them to. Um, and it helps me greatly if you use my links, um, mathsorcerer.com or freemathvids.com. I've got courses on advanced calculus that's kind of closely related to this. Um, you know, real analysis. I have, I have a course on that. I do have a course on real analysis, which is called Advanced Calculus, and Abstract Algebra, Calc 1, 2, 3, Differential Equations, Trig, etc. Tons of courses, and they can help you learn some mathematics. But this is a great book. I, I, I really like it. It's, it's definitely one of the better ones out there. There's a lot of newer books that have attempted to make the subject more easy. Um, and that's great. They're a little bit more wordy, though. This is to the point, and that's why I like it, especially if you already have a level of math or if you want something that's more direct. It's kind of hard to beat the classics, and this certainly is a classic and legendary book. I hope it's been helpful. Keep doing mathematics.